Hey, everybody. Somebody asked me an interesting question the other day uh, with regard to the size of the Fed's balance sheet, if the Fed has been reducing the size of its balance sheet. And the answer to that is no, it has not. Although we have already had two rate increases, uh, it has neither reduced the size of its balance sheet nor uh, reduced the holdings of Treasury securities in its portfolio. <clears throat> now, the Fed's balance sheet right now, all told with all of its assets, is about $4.5 trillion. The Fed's balance sheet uh, back in December of 2015, before the rate hike, was about $4.525 trillion. So it's reduced it a tiny, tiny bit by $25 billion, really insignificant. You're talking about, you know, five one-hundredths of a percent. Um, interestingly, though, <clears throat> excuse me, its holdings of Treasury securities has gone up by $30 billion. It went from uh, $2.46 trillion in December 2015 to $2.463 trillion. So that's a $30 billion increase. So um, there has been no reduction in the size of the Fed's balance sheet. And as I explained in the past, since the Fed pays interest on reserves uh, directly now, the need to manipulate reserve balances to sustain a policy rate, that kind of went away. As a matter of fact, I think I mentioned one time how Yellen actually spoke to that point in some testimony or a speech that she gave one time. She said that that um, authorization, which Congress gave them in 2008 to be able to pay interest on reserves, that allowed, that freed them up from having to manage reserve balances in the system. And it's easy to understand. If the Fed sets a rate, no bank is going to lend Fed funds below that rate, right? That's like a tax on itself when it could be earning the Fed's rate. If the Fed's paying the bank 75 basis points on reserves, it's certainly not going to turn around and lend overnight uh, reserves at 50 basis points, it'll just let the reserves sit there and earn the 75 basis points. So that acts as a floor, all right? Now, <clears throat> what has um, gone down is reserve balances in Federal Reserve Banks. Those are banks in the system. And the Fed has brought that down since December 2015 by about $400 billion. Now that, that sounds like a lot. Uh, the total level of reserves right now is like $2.62 trillion. And uh, those are reserve balances in Federal Reserve Banks, banks in the Federal Reserve System, okay? Um, but that is really inconsequential. And by the way, that reduction really started going all the way back to 2014. It was all the way up around $2.8 trillion. All right, and then um, when it came down to about 2.7-ish, uh, I would say, uh, around December 2015, and now it's down to 2.2 trillion, okay? But like I said, it's really kind of inconsequential. There's not much that banks could do with reserves. They just earn the interest being paid on it. Uh, now, there's less reserves, that's true, but it's not like, uh, but, but now rates are higher, okay, so that, that compensates. And it's not like um, they lend the reserves. They don't lend the reserves. As a matter of fact, the, the, the very act of loan creation creates the reserves, all right? Now, um, what was I going to say here? So reserve balances in Federal Reserve Banks have come down. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Um... On the flip side of that, you know, reduction in reserve balances in Federal Reserve Banks. Remember, the Fed's balance sheet has not changed. It has brought reserves down. On the flip side of that, um, the you might ask the question, well, how, how did uh, reserves come down if the Fed's balance sheet didn't change? Aha, that would be a very good question, right? Because the Fed in its buying and selling of, of uh, assets or securities. That's how it manipulates reserve levels. So you say, well, Mike, the Fed's balance sheet didn't change. So how did the reserves come down? Well, that's a great question. 
And the way it came down was that the Fed just kind of sat back when the Treasury was selling Treasury securities. All right. So the very act of selling treasury securities, what is that? That's a reserve drain. That's all the sale of treasury securities uh, is. It's a reserve drain. So, by the way, uh, in the last um, two years, I'm talking 2016, not even two years, really, 2016, fiscal year 2016. So we're talking about from October 2015 to October 2016, and in October 2016 until now, there has been a net addition of 1.6 trillion of treasury securities to the private sector, to the non-government. Now, what is that? That constitutes an addition of financial wealth in that amount. People own 1.6 trillion more of treasuries, all right, than they had before. That's a very positive thing, and they earn interest on that, okay? So that's, that's the whole situation right now, uh, the way it is. Um, you know, the tightening, the so-called tightening, there really isn't a tightening. It's a raise, it's a, it's a hike in interest rates. That's not a tightening. That is a price setting, all right? I want you to think about this stuff in the correct terms because when you start saying things like, tightening and all the kind of words that the mainstream of economics uses that's all wrong that and, and that you know i always talk about language if you use the wrong the wrong language if you use the wrong terminology that programs your mind into believing that stuff it's all code although the people who are saying it they really don't know what they're talking about they're just parroting the code remember i talked about parrots who are parrots? They read something in a book or they heard something on TV and they say the same thing, thinking that they know something. They don't know anything. They know Jack. So don't say any more tightening or don't say any more uh, loosening or stimulus. Just say price setting. That's all rates are. It's price setting. Anyway, that's my lesson for now. Talk to you later. Bye.